The Canadian Women's National Team are coming off of a bronze, followed by a bronze, followed by a gold medal at the previous three Olympics. Now coming up to the 2024 edition in Paris, they are going to try to repeat that. And today, Alex is coming on to join me to do a preview of the upcoming match between Canada and New Zealand, but also to kind of break down the tournament, talk about the roster, and give you guys our starting 11. So, Alex, first things first, let's take a look at the roster. The 18 players are in. There was a bit of a change. Scott goes through the alternate list. From the alternate list is Gabby Carl, who goes into the, I mean, maybe the starting 11, but she goes on to the 18-player roster for the injured Collins. So just give me your first impression about those uh, players. Yeah, I'd say overall the squad was about as, as expected. I think I projected 17 of 18. Like, it was pretty straightforward. The big surprise was Collins. That is a bit of a worrying situation, the, the sense that she was included despite not playing at all this year. Then she gets injured in her first game back. There always is questions to be had because, you know, the, when, when you're returning to an injury, especially in a mid you know, a tournament like this, where there's just a lot of, you know, different fitness is a huge question mark. Ultimately, she get, has to pull out with a, a tough injury, obviously feel for Collins because this might affect the, the rest of her season. But otherwise, a pretty straightforward roster. The alternates were intriguing, I, for the most part, not surprising. Uh, for example, to see a Shalina Zadorsky included as an alternate. I know there was some, you, know, you wonder if Canada can want an extra center back. I just don't think you can afford four with uh, such a small roster. Plus, with the alternates before the rule change, it was all right. If there was an injury, you've got enough depth to, to, to handle an injury in Colin Zadorsky because it's between games. But now it sounds like there's more flexibility, whereas or if you took out someone from the squad, they were done for the tournament. It just sounds like there's a little more flexibility. So I like the inclusion of uh, Zdorsky as an alternate. Uh, Deanne Rose, it's, you know, the fact that she had such a good pre-tournament uh, pre game against Australia was maybe a sign that she needed the alternate to call as a bit of a wake up after struggling a bit. Uh, Desiree Scott brings some leadership that's to be expected, you know, spot number 22 on the roster, you can bring in a bit of experience. The only surprise really not to see at all is Olivia Smith. I feel like she really could have benefited from the experience, even if it was as an alternate. Um, but we'll see if, uh, you know, Canada ends up missing her, or if they feel they've got a, enough firepower to, to get the job done without her. I was a little disappointed and surprised by Smith as well. Uh, but I do have a question for you surrounding uh, Julia Grosso, because I know uh, looking on X, there was a little bit of debate of whether she, you know, she would be a lock for this 18 player squad. Uh, she did just come off a move. She's going to Chicago. Uh, what do you make of the move? And are you surprised at all that she is a part of this team? Yeah, I think it's an intriguing move because you'd assume going to that Chicago Red Star team that she can be a centerpiece. She can get regular minutes. To be fair, that wasn't a problem at Juventus. So that's one thing. But the yeah, NWSL is a competitive league. If you can go out and be a not just a regular, but Julia Gross is someone you could see being a star in the league. That, that's the hope. So I think there's some potential for that uh, with the Red Star. And I think for this team, for me, it always felt like she was a lot because ultimately I don't think she's a starter in this formation. It just doesn't suit her. I see her as the third piece in a midfield and Canada's playing with the double pivot. But I think there's depth. She can provide cover for Jesse Fleming. What's nice, she can also play as a winger. Who knows, maybe if Canada's in a game where they need an extra midfielder or later in a game they can switch to a 3-5-2. I think Grosso offers them flexibility. So I would, I'm not surprised. And I feel like even if she's not starting every game or if it comes to a gold medal, she might not start that game. But she can still play a massive role throughout the tournament. So let's play a little game here and try to come up with the starting 11 as we do. It's the starting 11 that will kick off this tournament. Like you mentioned, Bev has kind of gone with this 3-4-3 for a while. I think it was a welcome change, and I believe she's probably going to stick with it. So Alex, I'm going to fire out the starting 11, and then we can kind of break it down from there. Uh, we'll start just with the keeper and uh, the back three right now, and there's really no surprise. Sheridan's the keeper. We have Rose, Gilles, and Buchanan. No surprises, no arguments there, right? Yeah, that's the pretty much the the four that are set in stone. And I mean, you could add a few players up, but it definitely feels like the back four. It's going to start for the first game and it's going to continue probably through most of the tournament unless anything wild happens. The midfield, I feel like there could be a, a couple question marks. I, I believe I'll, I'll let you go through it. No chance you don't think Gabby Carl finds her way right into the starting 11? In terms of the four, I'd say Lawrence and Fleming are the two locks. Like Lawrence that's her spot at right wing back Jess Fleming she's the captain she's the heartbeat of this team when she's at her best Canada's at her best when she struggles Canada struggles she's going to be in the heartbeat the interesting thing is 
yeah, those two other spots. First, it's the spot alongside Fleming. If fully fit, I think it's going to be Quinn. They bring a lot. But Simi Wujo, I really liked what she could bring. And if Quinn isn't fully fit, maybe see a Wujo starting games and Quinn coming off the bench. That's not a bad proposition. But we could also see vice versa. Maybe you see 45 to 60 of Quinn, a Wujo off the bench. I think we're going to see a lot of swapping between those two. Because the way Canada's set up, it's kind of one's a bit more of a DM, one's a bit more of a free roll. And that's Fleming and Gross are a bit more of the free roll midfielders. A Wujo Quinn are a bit more of the sixes. Then at wing back, I think Jade Riviere is going to start. Yeah. She seems to, to be preferred by Bev Priestman. I think offensively, it makes a lot of sense. And even defensively, Jade Riviere continues to grow a lot in her defensive game. The only thing is, it is a bit unnatural at times having a right footer on the left side. You know, Chloe Lacasse can sometimes go out and fill in as a bit of a lefty. But I do wonder if Carl could be looked at in certain games if you feel that you need a bit more natural width to push a Lacasse inside. And Carl's definitely in the form to, to go do that. So maybe we'll see some some Carl minutes as the tournament goes on. But I expect Riviere to be the day one starter. And I was wondering if you're going to bring up Lacasse going at left wing back because we've seen her play there before. We've seen her play very well there. Uh, but I was, I'm assuming since you didn't put her, you're going to maybe have her up top. I think the front three is the most fascinating to look at. For me, I'm assuming, again, if Lacasse is going up there, it would be Lacasse, uh, Leon, and then Prince. That's honestly probably my preferred front three. Uh, do you agree? I think that's the one probably we'll see a lot of change with because there's some talented players. I mean, Haidema's up there as well. So what, what does your front three look like? Yeah, well, to start with the front three, just, just to tie in what you said about Lacasse, keep an eye on Janine Becky at wing back because she mm, played, Bev Priestman has tried her a lot there. The thing is, she hasn't really played there for Portland. She's been an attacker, so it doesn't really fit, but she can play there. And I just say that because the way Bev Priestman's approached her attack over the last few months is that she she sees partnerships. She sees players who play together. And one, she's loved, and for my money, it's been the best three, is the three you mentioned, Lacasse, Prince, Leon. If all are fully fit, that appears to be the front three. But then Becky... Does she fit in? Do you give her a super sub role? Do you move her to wing back? You know, Jordan Hoytema, Evelyn Bien, but then also Bev Priestman has really liked the partnership of Vian Hoytema. They've kind of played a lot of minutes together and maybe it's something where I could see Priestman kind of rotate based on the game. Maybe in, the, in a game where you need a bit more fluidity, Lacasse, Leon, and Prince do that. What I love about all those three together is that Leon can play striker and wing. Prince can play striker and wing. Lacasse can kind of play all over. It can be super fluid where can they can kind of interchange and pop up. Whereas if you got a Hoytema, you got a Vienna, those are more traditional forwards. Those are going to be players who give you a certain role. Uh, so I think the, the front three could be very flexible game to game. And even especially with Prince's fitness, where she, Bev Priest is not going to want to push her to do 90s, at least not early in the tournament, where one game it might be Prince, white one game it might be Hoytema, but I expect kind of partnerships to, to stay together. to Because Bev Priestman has found her best partnerships, but she hasn't found the best lineup, which is a bit of an interesting group to have. It's interesting because, I, I mean, I think it's ridiculous that we only have 18 players going to the Olympics. It's the fact that at Copa America you had 26. I'd like to see more players involved, but there's a lot of depth there, like you mentioned. These games are coming fast, so you're going to have, like, Bev's going to have to rotate from game to game to try to obviously get the fitness and the game management throughout this tournament, um, get it right, which I think that she can do. And like you said, we have we have pieces that can go in there. So I am curious to see how this Canadian team will line up to begin with. I do kind of agree with the starting 11 that we talked about, but there is a lot of rooms to to switch things up, especially, I think, down that left-hand side, like we mentioned. So assuming it's something similar to the starting 11 that we had there, Alex, how do you think this Canadian team is going to hurt New Zealand? Yeah, I think this Canadian team... They, they've typically always matched up well with uh, New Zealand. You know, they just obviously uh, this Canadian team's talented. They can now they can hold on to the ball a lot more. Even the the last few times they played New Zealand, Canada wasn't as possession dominant as they are now, and they did well to to, to hold on to the ball and to find some some weaknesses. This New Zealand team is very organized. You saw it at last World Cup. Uh, they could, you know, they really caught some teams like a Norway by surprise in the opener, which is how direct and organized they can be. So for Canada, the big thing will be to to wear them down in possession, to really overload them. And that, uh, you know, New Zealand typically have tended to play like a, you know, four four two, and and have not straight away from that. So for Canada, it's okay. Can you create overloads in certain areas, but then not get hit in transition? Um, so I'm, I'm expecting a lot from Canada's possession game, and I think that's why that's something they've practiced a lot, especially at the Gold Cup where they were playing a lot of low blocks. I think that will benefit them massively. 
New Zealand team. Is that part of the reason you want to see Quinn start? Is when you get you know a little bit more defense-minded midfielder. When you, if you get lost in, in transition, then all of a sudden they come back. You're down your throats. It's nice to ha- have a player like Quinn in there. Yeah, I think that's uh, you know definitely an option. You could also say on the flip side, maybe that helps in a Wujo because if you want a bit more in possession too. But Quinn's also you kind of you're, you're you're set either way. I, I think it, you know maybe that's something to look at for the wing backs. Whereas you know sometimes. Uh, you, you you might want a bit more of a aggression at wing backs. I wonder if this could open up a Lacasse wing back start, a Becky wing back start, because you might need that extra body out wide to create an overload, and then you're just going to be like, all right, trust the midfielders to to be a bit of the, the the transition stopper, so to speak, if New Zealand's trying to hit it on the counter. All right, Alex, this is going to be a bit of a different tournament because Christine Sinclair is not on the roster, so we're going to play a little game right now, and it's just some, some predictions here. I want you to tell me a player that you think Canadians should watch out for. Kind of, this could be their breakout tournament. Then I also want you to give me who do you think is going to be the leading goal scorer for Canada from this squad. Oof, that's a, that's a good spot to go because there's definitely a few that I think Canadians will need to watch out for. I think I'll go with one, though, that I know is going to start and know is going to play a huge role. Just keep an eye out for Jade Rose. She just feels like someone who's destined to, to play at a top, top, top level. I mean, you've just seen how she's become a starter despite being at Harvard all the years. That like she just is such a solid, solid player, and you can see that intelligence in her play. Uh, that's uh, you know obviously aided by her strong education background, and it's going to be exciting to see where she goes pro and takes that next step because she's already such a good force at the back. She's quick, but she's good on the ball. She's she just does everything you want from a modern center back in this Canadian team. They're, they're, they're going to need to defend. And I kind of see something where like Vanessa Gilles came out of nowhere and was one of Canada's best players at the Olympics. Jade Rose, a hundred percent reminds me uh, of some of a player who could do uh, go on a similar trajectory in terms of the goal scoring. I mean, I think I'll just go boring because I think she's been the one who scored all the goals, no matter what the team, no matter the circumstance, it's going to be Adriana Leon. This feels like it's her tournament. She's had a few tournaments now where, She's kind of been on a fringe role and there's been calls for her to play a bigger role. No, there's no doubting that she's a starter on this team. She's been scoring goals all year long. I can't foresee that stopping anytime soon. So I'd have to go lay on. Although, you know, maybe a, a healthy Nichelle Prince can, can make that a bit of a fun. I was going to say you, I mean, maybe I should have went first because I, I agree. Those, those are the two obvious answers, but I'll, I'll give a couple different ones. Uh, breakout player. If it's not Jade Rose, assuming that it's kind of a newer player in the scene, Abujo is probably my pick. You know, she comes in to one of the matches, she makes a difference, maybe she bumps Quinn out, maybe, like you said, if Canada's d- dominating the ball a little bit, she's the type of player you want to have on. I could see her being in for a big term- tournament, I think she would complement Fleming pretty well. And then I'll, I'll go with Prince as well. I, I I mean, Prince can score goals, we know that for sure. Adriana Leon is just a little bit of everything, whether it's from set pieces, um, she's an excellent finisher of the ball, she's in fantastic form, it's, she's the no-brainer. But Nichelle Prince can put the ball in the back of the net as well, and I, I really think that we found a, a new... I really like when they switched to this front three and had Prince play through the middle like this. I feel like it unlocked a little bit of her game that I wasn't super aware of, and I really liked it. So I think that she could be in for a good one as well. And Alex, the final question for you today is just give me a simple prediction. What do you think that the New Zealand-Canada game will end up being? It's a good question. I'd probably go... I'm going to go 2-0 Canada. I think Canada loves the Olympics. I think they're set to come out to a good start. This is a good matchup. Um, They kind of get the... You know, again, not to say it's the easy match because it's going to be far from a new zealand showed at the world cup they're not an easy match by any stretch but for canada you got the host france in your group and they're not going to be a uh, push over in front of a strong pro french crowd colombia as we saw as an up and rising team new zealand's the the kind of the must win the should win for canada in this group come out strong get three points because if you get three points teams who win one group stage in the olympics it's been something it's since like 20 20- or 2008 like one team has not made it out the group if with if they win a game like you win a game you're almost guaranteed to get out yeah. your group get that win early so you can head into colombia and france and and use those games as a you know you, you're going to want to go out and win those games but there's not going to be that same pressure i won't copy you I, I was great at the predictions for copa america so i'm hoping something similar i think they'll be a little nervy uh i think it'll be a a good showing from New Zealand. I'm going to go with a one nothing Canada scoreline. I think eventually they'll find that goal. They'll get the three points. They'll build a little confidence. And they're, they're, going to, they're going to go into a very, very difficult match against France. And I think we're really going to see what this Canadian side is made of. So let us know down in the comment section, guys, what you thought of the roster, what you think of this upcoming match. Leave your score prediction. And as always, if you enjoy this, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub. We'll see you guys soon. Cheers, friends.